Hey guys, you too. What's happening? Chris Rod, Sun City Long Care. We are back here in the yard, uh, the backyard, <laughs> the lawn area. We're doing an update video and we're talking about May Lawn Care, guys. It's come, you know, we're in the middle of May and some of you guys are starting to experience some issues, some problems in your own very backyards, whether it be uh, the lack of growth, there's chlorosis. Some areas just may not be growing. Um, pest issues, ants, grubs. Uh, you're not gonna experience sod wed worms or army worms right now. It's too early in the season for that. You get those on the back end. Remember, the early part of the spring, early summer, you're gonna get attacked and infested by grub worms. Those white little fatty looking worms. And we actually got through treating a property this past week on a Tuesday St. Augustine installation that we did two years ago, he got attacked by some grub worms and they started eating away at the root system. I'll put a couple pictures up here to describe what I'm talking about, but they just wreak havoc on that root system. Um, and the way that you guys tell, since we're talking about pests and grubs, ants, is if you've got, if you think you've got a grub issue, what they'll do is they'll feast on the lawn. Um, and they kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, they kind of migrate from one area to the next and they just keep eating away at that root system. And you should be able to do what's called a pull test where you can pull that grass up or roll it like a piece of carpet. And again, we did that and we saw a couple grubs this past week. So now's a really good time as far as May lawn care goes. Get some pest control down, whether it be a Zoxystrobin or Propaganazole, one of your two active ingredients inside of your uh, DIY products that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. Or if you're looking something for more direct that's highly concentrated or high in concentrated, uh, those are your two active ingredients, okay, to treat for grubs, army worms, sod web worms, even though you don't have those yet, ants, ticks, cinch bugs. There might, I think there might even, no, I don't want to say fleas. No, that'd be wrong of me to say that. But either way, you can get some product. You got granular options. You got liquid options. Um, later this week, I'm going to be doing that application. And we'll talk more about that if you want to follow along on application rates and how to apply uh, pest control. Typically, what we're trying to do is prevent those uh, occurrences from happening. So uh, you want to be proactive about it. Get some product down. June bugs, first week of June, we start seeing June bugs, you know, when you get appropriate soil temperatures, those grub worms, they turn into a June bug. That June bug pops out of the soil, starts flying around all over your pool. Matter of fact, we're here. Let's see if we got any June bugs in my pool skimmer. I don't see any on the surface yet. Don't hate me on the pool because I know it's a mess and I got to clean it today but nothing in the skimmer, which is really good. So that's promising. I'll tell you what though, in past years, I've seen them pop up in this side of the yard first. Okay, when I start mowing and I start doing my thing, if I see a June bug, then I've already, I didn't miss my window, but I know I've got grubs, okay? And the little white brown, or I'm sorry, the little brown beetles, those are from grub worms. Keep that in mind, okay? So be proactive about it. This is made lawn care. You can go ahead and get that product down now, okay? I know for a fact in the food forest, I got ants that are crossing the driveway to the food forest, and I need to go treat for ants. You stay tuned because I'm going to show you a product that you guys can use for ant control outside of the pest control for grubs and, uh, you know, cinch bugs, things of that nature. I really haven't seen any pests back here, but this is made lawn care, okay? You guys should start preparing. If you don't have product, get your product because now's the time to do it. So outside of that, what else can we do in May? If you haven't already done so, you need to fertilize. Um, we're coming up on a May fertility application here in the next two weeks for a lot of our clients. Um, start pushing that growth is what I'm essentially saying, okay? If you're in a fertility program and you guys are applying fertilizer, keep it um, three quarter pounds per thousand square feet is what you wanna target. Uh, and in the summertime is when you wanna back off that fertility. But now is your really good opportunity to go ahead and start pushing a lot of growth because the microorganisms inside of your soil system, they're active. They're actively eating that fertilizer to desecrate it, poop it out, and turn it into a readily available nutrient source for your plant, your grass to uptake. That's how that process works. There's this whole nitrogen cycle that works, okay? But, um, so 
We're talking about pest control. We're talking about fertility, push a lot of growth, apply some fertilizer, keep it at the half pound or three quarter pound per thousand square feet um, per application. Um, what you will know if you've been following my channel whatsoever is I haven't put down any fertilizer in this lawn whatsoever, okay? And it, you know, I got my glasses, I got this big old ball of goodness behind me here and or up above me, and I, it's hard to see through the, the phone. But to talk about my lawn a little bit, let's get a back, a further back shot here. How's that? You guys know this lawn is probably the worst that it's <laughs> ever been, okay? Again, if you've been following the channel, you've seen my pictures on Instagram and whatnot. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button because I got plenty of information that I can teach you guys and help you, especially if you're here in El Paso um, with growing some grass. And I may, it sounds odd because I'm, it's an educational channel, but I don't have the greenest lawn on the block, right? Well, the reason why is because I haven't done any fertility. I'm displaying and showing you guys what happens when you don't apply fertilizer, okay? So you guys know on this side of the yard, we did a core aeration. And this side of the yard, we did a liquid aeration. And when you can tell, when you look, you can see a noticeable difference between this side of the, the yard and this side of the yard, especially this area right here. Um, there's just so many very bare spots. There's a lot, there looks like a lot of chlorosis, not the darkest lawn on the block, right? As opposed to this side over here, it's full, it's thick. There is a little sparse area there, okay? This grass, when it's primed and when it's in its, you know, peak condition, a lot of it looks like this. Nice carpet looking grass. Okay, let's get a close up of this because we're gonna get into this and dive deep real, real quick and a little bit more. What you'll also notice, got a lot of seed heads popping up. Bermuda grass seed heads, where are they at? They're all over, look at this guy. Okay, you're starting to see them everywhere. All right, so when you start seeing those grass seed heads pop up and you usually see it early springtime or right before summertime, here in El Paso in West Texas, we get these, these heat indexes where one day it's freaking 60 degrees, the next day it's 80, and then it's back down to 60, and then we get some random rain, um, then it's in the hundreds the next day. We call it bipolar weather in El Paso, to be honest with you. But what happens when the turf, when your grass, your Bermuda grass starts producing those seeds, heads, it's letting you know that it uh, is stressed. And so it's going into this protective mode of reproduction. So it produces these seed heads, right? Don't confuse those with weeds, all right? It's simply your Bermuda grass producing seed heads, okay? And that's absolutely normal and it's fine. So again, getting back to the main lawn care, what can you be doing? Get down your pest management, uh, your, your, your pest control application. You need to continue to fertilize, go on the higher dose of that, okay? And get out there and start mowing your lawn. You gotta mow your grass, okay? And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna simply be mowing, but outside of the mowing the edging this lawn hasn't had water in a week okay so what i what i wanted to show you guys was the fact that you can still have a really good looking lawn or you can have a green lawn and it's struggling in certain areas but there's no chlorosis as far as water or irrigation deprivation in the areas where the sprinkler heads are We've got our trouble spots, yeah, because we're trying to bounce back from all that dog pee that happened and killed that ryegrass, so we're rebounding from that. But getting to the point of the video is what can you be doing in, in May? Keep it simple. Mow, water, fertilize. We're coming up on June, so start doing your pest control. Be proactive about it. And then the last aspect of May lawn care, what you guys can start preparing for, depending on where you're at, here in West Texas, we start to get these random rain showers, okay? For example, the reason why I haven't watered this lawn in a week is last week when I, or earlier this week, I'm sorry, when I looked at the forecast, I saw rain across the board this coming week every single day. Matter of fact, starting at 3 p.m. today, it's supposed to rain. But you see, I don't know, these clouds, <laughs> they're, they're very, they're, they're not, you know, they're not telling me it's gonna rain and I haven't watered in a week. And I would honestly say this lawn doesn't look that bad for not having water for a whole week, okay? 
well how is it the way it is how is it green how is it still you know growing without having watered for a week well the reason why is because i also apply hydratane okay that's that moisture manager program that i've been uh making some videos and talking to you guys about so another may application is make sure your irrigation is wor working properly or if you've got some forecast coming in great and if not get some of that hydratane product down okay that way you've got water retention increased water retention inside of your lawn guys let's see let's let's just do a little follow-up area over here it's all right nothing crazy there if you guys remember we dug all that out it's filling in you guys know about this spot right that right there that's where that nitrogen burn came from that fish emulsion that i used but this stuff this grass over here ugh, every year it just looks tell me that don't look like carpet right now that looks and it's not even cut it's crazy no nitrogen no fertility in this area whatsoever in my whole backyard no fertility whatsoever guys so um I'm, I'm getting the itch though i'm getting the itch to apply some fertilizer i'm thinking about doing a you know a case study on not applying fertilizer half no fertilizer and half go ahead and apply some fertilizer or vice versa whichever side and just to show you guys the difference between having a soil test conducted where it says your nitrogen is good to go <laughs> it give you a recommendation but the question i've always wondered and maybe you guys can help me out with this and give me your opinion and leave a comment below with your response is if your soil test comes back right and this is a question that is that i've always begged to answer your soil test comes back and it you, you're sufficient you're good across the board your ph is good your nitrogen calcium magnesium all your npk rates or i'm sorry all your 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 macros and your micros they're all sufficient at what point in time do you fertilize thereafter that's the question one and two we understand as um lawn care enthusiasts or those that are really diving deep into it we understand that on average bermuda lawns a lot of your lawns typically need anywhere from two to four pounds of nitrogen per year to continue to grow and thrive and stay healthy well when you get that soil test back it gives you a recommendation right but does it get specific on how much you need for the whole year how deficient or sufficient are you actually in on your macros and micros so when do you actually start reapplying that begs the question. If you got the answer, leave a comment below. I'd love to chat with you guys and see what your thoughts are about that. Outside of that, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this grass. I'm gonna go ahead and apply um, some biochar today. I'm gonna keep that carbon extremely high and making sure that we've got a readily available food source for the microorganisms to continue to utilize the nutrients that are already in the soil. But you guys let me know, should I fertilize the side, do a case study? I don't know. I'm feeling it though, I'm feeling it. You guys let me know if you have a comment, leave it down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching. Y'all stay tuned for the follow-up. We got late May coming up and uh, June's right around the corner. All right, so I know I can be pretty chatty and I can talk forever about lawn care, but it's because I love it so much, right? And um, I love having and the, the ability to get out here and show you guys a thing or two in my own very backyard. And I guarantee you, some of my clients, their lawns look way better than mine right now because I'm doing that fertility and I'm doing some, uh, some additional applications. But in addition to today's video, what I did want to talk about is this pro plugger here. Okay. I had a, a gentleman, he, he commented, commented it on one of the last videos on the comparison from the core aeration to the liquid, right? And so his comment had stated a true test would be to pull cores from both sides and see which one has retained moisture better i think that was his comment to more or less that's what it was so what i wanted to do is i want to go ahead and pull a core from each side of the yard and show you guys those results to actually see if we have increased water holding capacity on the core aeration side versus the liquid aeration side the whole yard has had hydrotain applied to it which has helped with our water holding capacity for when we don't irrigate, okay? Or when I don't water, we don't get rainfall. And so 
through this video, you know I haven't watered all week. Matter of fact, the last time I watered was last Saturday. So it's literally been a week and a day, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a core. This thing's cool as heck. If you're trying to fill in some areas, all you gotta do is pull a core out and uh, the area where you're trying to grow grass, you pull another core out and you backfill with the area that has the good grass, okay? But today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull two cores, one from each side and see which one actually looks like it's retained water um, from either aeration application. All right, guys, let's take a look here. All right, so this is the side that was core aerate. Look at that root. Ooh, that's gotta be eight inches at least. Nice, dark, looks like it's got good water retention. And this is the liquid aeration side. No root coming out of the bottom of that one. But I would, <laughs> I think it's safe to say there's no difference whatsoever in either one of these cores. What do you guys think? You see what I'm talking about here? And this lawn hasn't had water in a week, all right? But that definitely looks moist. No water coming out, but it holds its form. That broke apart there. All right, so I just showed you those two cores and I hope this answers that question for that gentleman in a true test, pull a core, see which one looks like it's holding more water. Well, you saw the cores, they are the exact same, same distance apart, different sides of the yard, one core aeration, one versus the liquid aeration, they look exactly the same. But here's the catch, okay? The core aeration side, we created the holes, we opened it up, we got airflow, water penetration, that's fine and dandy, okay? On the liquid aeration side, we did the same thing, the same concept. Um, it, the, the product, the potassium hydroxide, it opens up, it breaks up those bonds inside your soil system, okay? And helps loosen things up for water and nutrient retention, okay? But the key difference here, and this is again why I'm an advocate of the liquid aeration, is the combination of the potassium hydroxide. So we're feeding it potassium, one. Two, you got that humic, and three, the fulvic acid inside of the, the, the soil on this side to help promote root growth. <laughs> That's the hugest difference, guys. Plus, I didn't have to lug around that piece of heavy equipment you understand the difference? I hope you guys do. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, give me a comment below, give me your thoughts. Let me see how your lawn's doing. If you guys have any questions, this is May Lawn Care. Now's the time to get proactive about preventative maintenance um, in regards to pest control, fungus, disease issues, which in summertime, when you get these random rains, that can happen. Get your fungicides down. Y'all stay tuned because we got upcoming videos on pest products the application rates, what kind of product you use, and the same goes for fungicides. Y'all stay tuned. Have a good day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody.